In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the world of heat pumps in cold weather, and I'm going to go over some common misconceptions about heat pumps, and also provide you with some guidance on how they work and what to expect if you're installing one for the first time. And if you're new to the channel, there will be a video linked at the end that talks about dual fuel heat pumps, which is one of my favorite types of heat pumps for cold climates, but more on that later. And if you're also not sure about what a heat pump even is and how a heat pump works, it's actually very simple. So I'll link another video at the end that explains what a heat pump is and how they work so you understand the context. But in a nutshell, it is basically an air conditioner with a reversing valve. But if you live in a cold climate, not just any heat pump will do. And in fact, some of them work better than others in cold weather, which is exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. And also in this video, we'll be covering several topics around heat pump. I will talk about one of the biggest heat pump myths. We will explain the defrost cycle and why that's important. And we'll also touch on the difference between the various types of heat pumps available, specifically inverter heat pumps versus single stage heat pumps. And I'll also discuss some of the mini split heat pumps available. And we'll also talk about some of the various ratings as they relate to heat pumps. So first off, let's talk about the biggest heat pump myth. And that is that they don't work in cold weather. Now, every time I put out a video and talk about heat pumps and how they work great in cold weather. I always have at least one or two Eskimos troll me in the comments saying something along the lines of it's negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 30 Celsius in my climate and heat pumps just don't work here. So if you happen to be friends with Santa Claus, that may be the case. Heat pumps might not work for you, but I'm going to talk about the best cold climate heat pumps, dual fuel systems, and what they are designed to do. And that video uh, will be linked at the end that talks about dual fuel systems because these are awesome systems for people that live in marginal climates or extremely cold climates like that where a regular heat pump might not work that well. So there's a few heat pumps that we install on a regular basis and they are rated to perform down to negative 10 Fahrenheit. And you might be thinking, what happens if it gets colder than that? Well, the short answer is that you will always have a backup heat option unless you live in an area with a moderate climate like Phoenix, Arizona or Dallas, Texas, for example, because with the exception of the recent freeze that happened in Texas the past couple of years, it's extremely rare that you're going to get freezing temperatures in these climates. For example, if your heat pump has no backup heat in Arizona and the low temperatures on the forecast are 45 degrees, chances are you'll probably be all right overnight until the HVAC guy shows up in the morning. But in a very cold region like Minnesota or Montana, you're obviously going to want backup heat in the event that your heat pump can't keep up. Now, keep in mind, this is all automatic, meaning that the control logic inside your heat pump system will switch over between backup heat and your heat pump as your primary heat source. So you won't notice a difference when one versus the other is working. The bottom line is you want to look at what are your average temperatures and what are your lowest temperatures. And if 25 days out of the month, your low temps don't drop below negative 10, for example, or stay below negative 10, your heat pump will be operational 25 out of those 30 days. And on those other days, the backup heat will only be on for a few hours during those super low temps. Now I go over this in a separate video, but the bottom line is that modern heat pumps work well in most cold climates. And if a contractor happens to tell you otherwise, they just might not be as familiar with the newer heat pump technology because some heat pumps actually don't work well in cold weather. For example, most single stage 14 sear or 16 sear heat pumps are only rated down to 25 or 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So if that is all your contractor is used to working on, then they're not going to know about the higher end technology that is out there. Now let's talk about some of the ratings to consider when choosing a heat pump. The two ratings that hold the most weight are HSPF, which stands for Heating Seasonal Performance Factor, and SEER, which stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. Now essentially, the higher the rating, the more efficient the system is, is the short explanation. However, the fact is that that is not 100% true and some systems may have lower HSPF or SEER ratings but actually be more efficient. So there's a few more ratings in specifications that you're going to want to look at, uh, not just the SEER and HSPF. And in case you're wondering why the rating system is set up that way, it's because unfortunately it doesn't take into account the type of system and it uses very basic math. This is especially true for EER ratings or EER ratings, which is your energy efficiency ratio. But again, I'm not going to go into that video because I already explained that in another video on this channel. So I'll make sure to link that at the end as well for you because I wanna make sure I'm staying on point and talking about heat pumps and how to choose the best one specifically. But the bottom line is these are indicators of a system's heating output 
per watt of power consumed. But for cold climate heat pumps, the most important thing to look at is going to be its low ambient temperature ratings and performance indicators. So I'll go through those now. The number that is the most important to me when choosing a heat pump for a cold climate is the low ambient rating. Now I want to know at what temperature the heat pump still has 100% capacity. And I also want to know at what temperature the heat pump essentially shuts down and switches over to backup heat. For example, on the Daikin product line, the new enhanced Daikin Fit heat pump, which is out as of September of 2023, allows for low ambient heating down to negative 10 Fahrenheit. The next thing to look at is the COP or coefficient of performance and what the low ambient performance numbers are. Now this can help you gauge whether or not your system is going to keep up the majority of the time because the most important thing is not that your heat pump is running 24 seven. The fact of the matter is that you will still experience a savings even if your heat pump is only on 50% of the time, for example, but this is only true if you have a low ambient heat pump that is more efficient to run than a furnace. Now, in the past two years, this has become especially true in most regions because natural gas prices have recently skyrocketed, but the bottom line is make sure you have a contractor that knows what they're talking about. This also changes from year to year with natural gas prices, but this is another reason that I love dual fuel setups because you can actually run whatever is most efficient or cheapest to run in a given year uh, in terms of how you stage your equipment. In general, the best types of heat pumps are always going to be inverters and the best types of inverter systems are always communicating systems. And the reason is because these ramp up and down similar to how a modulating furnace works. This means that rather than coming on or off 100% like a single stage system, these actually ramp up and down along a continuum and they are extremely efficient. My two favorite inverter heat pumps for cold climates are the Daikin VRV Life and the Daikin fit. They have a very good cold weather performance ratings and they are communicating systems and they are extremely quiet, which is why our customers love them. And they are also one of our best sellers for the mid to high range systems. VRV Life, which is based on VRF technology, which stands for variable refrigerant flow, is nice if you are looking to zone or have multiple head units in your house in addition to central air, because this provides the ultimate comfort and that you can set the temperature of individual rooms in addition to having having uh, central heating and cooling. Which brings me to my next point of discussion, and that is ductless mini split heat pumps. Now, before I go any further, if you're enjoying the content so far, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's a free way you can support the channel and it is much appreciated. And at the end of this video, uh, post a comment in the comment section below letting us know what you think and what type of system you're leaning towards for your home. I'm always curious on what people's individual projects are and we do read and respond to all the comments just keep in mind sometimes we're busy servicing and installing air conditioning so we don't always have time to respond right away but we definitely take your feedback into consideration whenever we create a piece of content. So most mini split heat pumps are inverter systems but not all of them are created equal. The big thing to look for is if it's a ductless unit you're considering considered a cold climate heat pump. For example Daikin and Mitsubishi were both pioneers in the low ambient ductless space and have systems that run into negative 20 Fahrenheit so if you happen to be considering a ductless option, there should be plenty of options available for you to choose from, especially if you're just looking to put a condenser and a head unit on a wall in a cabin, for example. Low ambient ductless mini splits can be an excellent cost effective option for this type of use case. Again, just make sure you have someone that knows what they're doing when it comes to choosing equipment so you get a system that is going to heat and cool your space effectively. And this is also true for the installation considerations because you want to make sure the contractor that you choose is familiar with the necessity for certain systems to have a heat pump stand for the defrost cycle. Now, most side discharge heat pumps will require a heat pump stand or a wall mount unit so that they can drop their ice during the defrost cycle. And in case you're wondering what a defrost cycle is, I will explain that now. Now, the video that's at the end of this explains how heat pumps work and what the purpose of a reversing valve is, and it will go into that in more in depth. But the bottom line is that that a defrost cycle is something that happens in every heat pump cycle because the condenser outside is going to get covered with frost and ice while it is running and this happens often typically every 30 minutes. Now this is going to vary based on outdoor temperature conditions but what will happen is the system will reverse the flow of refrigerant to thaw the condenser when this is happening and when this happens you won't get heat coming through your vents during the defrost cycle once the system thaws, which normally takes five or 10 minutes, it 
will then switch back into heating mode and keep chugging away. Now keep in mind the specifics of how a heat pump will go in and out of defrost mode will vary based on the design of the system, but this is perfectly normal operation. If you don't like the idea of your heater going through the defrost cycles, the truth is you will get used to it and it's not super noticeable at all. The only time you'll notice it is if you got back from out of town, for example, and you crank the heat from 50 degrees, if that was your out of town temperature setting up to 72, then it might have a few defrost cycles on its way to satisfying temperature. But other than that, it can normally maintain temperature inside the home within the confines of the defrost cycles without you noticing. The bottom line is talk to a local contractor that advertises heat pumps and knows what they're talking about because a local contractor is not going to want to install something that isn't going to work and they will be able to advise you best on whether or not the system that you are looking for will be within budget and accomplish what you are hoping for. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Metro or Colorado Springs, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free we come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's a link actually in the description below where you can schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. So hopefully you found this content helpful. And if you did, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm. And again, if you haven't already, please consider posting a comment in the comment section below, letting us know what project you are currently working on and what brings you to the channel. I've also had uh, channel subscribers point out technology sometimes that I hadn't heard of before. And as a result, we've added new product lines because we're always looking to add more products that provide unique solutions for our customers. So we do read the comments and really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already. And we will catch you on the next episode.